what is the difference between anxiety and a phobia? So let me cut right to the chase here. People with anxiety or generalized anxiety disorder tend to be anxious for quite a wide variety of things, while people with a phobia are actually really afraid of a specific type of situation or object. A phobia is actually a specific type of anxiety, you could say. So let me explain a little bit more. There are different kinds of phobias and we organize them in three groups. So the first group is called the specific phobia. And when you have a specific phobia, you can be afraid, for example, for animals like dogs and snakes or for nature, for thunderstorms or water. You can be afraid of a specific situation. So you can be afraid of heights or afraid of small spaces like an elevator, you have a phobia that is medical related. So you have people that are really afraid of needle or seeing blood or another specific situation. So people that are really afraid of choking or vomiting or uh, clowns or dolls. Then you have the second group and that is a social phobia. And I also made a video about that. And social phobia is also called uh, social anxiety. And the last one is agoraphobia. And with agoraphobia, and I believe that agora is the Greek word for like town square or uh, I only remember the Dutch word now, but uh, it's actually that you're afraid of going outside and afraid of leaving the safe space of your home. And when you go outside, then you are really afraid of getting panic attacks or you're afraid of not being able to uh, go away quickly. People with agoraphobia tend to be home a lot because home is safe for them. So you might think that it's quite normal to be afraid of the things that I just talked about. Uh, like for example, being afraid of snakes or needles or blood. But there is a difference between having normal fear and having a phobia or having an anxiety disorder. So when we check the DSM-5 again, remember the DSM-5 is this manual that a lot of psychiatrists and a lot of psychologists use to check if someone meets like all the criteria for a certain disorder. DSM-5 has a lot of benefits. It also has a lot of downsides, but that's something for another video. So when is something considered like anxiety or a phobia in this case? And when is something like normal fear? So the first criteria is that with a phobia, you have unreasonable and excessive fear. So the fear is really intense and it's really persistent and it's really excessive in reaction to that situation or to that object. So for example, being afraid of water or the ocean is quite irrational. Being afraid of the ocean or being afraid of water when you're being pushed into the ocean, when you can't swim, that's quite reasonable. Going inside when you hear a thunderstorm coming is reasonable. But being anxiously inside the whole day when they forecasted a thunderstorm is unreasonable. And being nervous meeting a new group of people is reasonable. That's normal. But if you have to like cry every time or vomit when you have to go to a party, then that's not really reasonable. Then the fear you're experiencing is excessive and it's really intense and it's persistent. And then it's something we say, okay, that's not uh, normal anymore. And of course, normal is still a really thin line, like what is considered normal. But that is something that we look at then. If it's unreasonable or if it's a reasonable uh, anxiety response to that situation or object. So normal fear is there to protect us and a phobia is actually debilitating. And the second criteria is that with a phobia, anxiety response is immediate. They say again that the anxiety response is out of proportion to the actual danger that you're in and also that the anxiety response is instantaneously. So it's a response that happens right away. And the third one is that people with a phobia try to avoid that specific type of situation or uh, object. And the next criteria is that with a phobia, the symptoms are really life limiting in that it really affects your school performance or performance at work or your social life because you are busy with avoiding all kinds of situations or you're experiencing intense fears 
for anxiety. It affects your day-to-day -day life. And the next criteria is that the symptoms have to be there for at least six months. That's the same for kids and for adults. And the last criteria is that the specific phobia is not caused by any other disorder. But they say that psychologists or psychiatrists really have to look at if the symptoms are being caused by, for example, obsessive compulsive disorder or by separation anxiety disorder or by any type of other uh, yeah, mental health disorder. So that makes it a little bit difficult sometimes to really diagnose someone with a phobia because it can have a lot of overlap with different kinds of anxiety disorders. It's important, I think, that if you notice that you are really struggling with something that is really affecting your day-to-day -day life, that is affecting your uh, performance at work or school or uh, I think even more important your social life then it's um, yeah I think you owe it to yourself to seek help for this there are a lot of awesome psychologists and psychiatrists out there who can help you but if you recognize yourself in these symptoms and in these fears and it is influencing your life in a big way then please seek help for this okay this is it for today i hope i explained it in a clear way and if there are any other questions please let me know and maybe also if you have something that you have a question about or maybe something that you find interesting that i can answer in a video or make a video about in general so please let me know. I hope I'll see you next time again. Bye.